What if I told you I set up a basic Ubuntu virtual machine and installed no apps, told no one about it, and I didn't even add a domain? I then went to bed and I woke up and I was expecting no activity on my virtual machine. To my surprise, I already had over 15,000 decisions and 12 alerts by the open source project CrowdSec. Do I have your attention now? This open source project definitely has mine. Have you ever looked at your server logs? There are so many attempts every millisecond to access your server or apps. This is where the open source project CrowdSec comes in. But what is CrowdSec? CrowdSec is a free, modern and collaborative behavior detection engine coupled with a global IP reputation network. Once a threat is detected, you can respond to it with various remediation components, also known as bouncers. For example, firewall, block, nginx, capture, and more. Then aggressive IPs can be sent to CrowdSec for curation, but it does not stop there, as this information is shared among all users to improve everyone's security. Basically, CrowdSec is crowdsourcing bad IPs. Does that sound complicated? Trust me, it's not, but I wanna break it down for you and give you a demo on how you can get started in a few minutes. Plus, you're going to love the awesome visual dashboard, but for those command line junkies, there is that also. But how does CrowdSec work? It analyzes threats in your logs. CrowdSec itself does the detection part and stores those decisions. Then the bouncers can consume those decisions and take any required action, such as blocking over 50 unwanted behaviors like web scanning, port scanning, credential stuffing, brute force, and more. The reason why CrowdSec is so powerful is that it not only uses your logs, but crowdsources the information from the community. But don't worry, it only shares the absolute minimum information like incoming IP and the results of the decision. CrowdSec does not store your logs locally or remotely. Your data is analyzed locally and forgotten. Remember, it is open source. So you can always go and check it out for yourself. With this community approach, this allows the network to get stronger. So by using CrowdSec, you're not only protecting yourself, but also improving the community's protection. So it's win-win for everyone. You don't need to worry about performance. It was built using Golang, so it's super efficient. Plus it's modular with a pluggable framework and is shipped with a large variety of popular scenarios. Meta information about detected attacks, source IP addresses, time and triggered scenarios is sent to a central API and then shared amongst all users in the CrowdSec community. So it is possible to detect and stop attacks in real time based on your logs. But you can also preemptively block known bad actors from accessing your information on your system before it happens. CrowdSec's mission is simple. Make the internet a safer place for everyone. I would like to give you a bit of background on the open source project. It was started by three founders who used to work in high security hosting. They designed a protection stack, which would also block IPs that made violations. The idea for CrowdSec as we know it now happened when the e-commerce shop of one of their clients was under attack. This was the starting point to design a lightweight product that would not only block attacks, but also share IPs with the whole user community. I know you have all been waiting for the techie section. Well, we are here. Let's install CrowdSec. It is a small to medium setup, so should use less than 100 megabytes of memory. I'm going to create an Ubuntu VM on Sivo for this demo. As CrowdSec is super flexible, there are many ways to install this, so you can select your preference, with examples like using apt or docker or building from source. So now we have an Ubuntu instance running that's completely kind of basic and default. Let's connect to it on the terminal. So I'm gonna grab the public IP and let's SSH to it. And now we're logged in. So what we can do is we can actually take the two minute installation and run those commands. The first thing we're gonna do is take the curl command and we're going to run their script. 
Now the repository is set up, we can run the next command, which is update apt. But I think it's been done already, but let's just do it just in case so there are no surprises. So let's actually install CrowdSect using apt. Now CrowdSec is installed and running, but remember that CrowdSec's package is only in charge of the detection and won't block anything on its own. You need to deploy a bouncer to apply the decisions made by CrowdSec. CrowdSec has a hub where you can browse and install all the CrowdSec collections, configurations and bouncers. You can find it on hub.crowdsec.net and you'll find all your favorite support for your providers like AWS, GCP, and even directly for your application like Nginx, WordPress, and so much more. So let's install a bouncer. So I'm gonna clear the terminal to free up some space, and now let's install the bouncer from apt as well. And that's it. Now CrowdSec is running and your server is protected. Let me show you a bit about what CrowdSec can do from a VM I created recently. With the CrowdSec CLI, there are so many commands you can run to manage CrowdSec and see how the system is performing. From decision lists to metrics and more. At the beginning, when you first install it, there might be no results, but give it a little time, just a very little amount of time and you will be super surprised. If I run using the CrowdSec CLI CS CLI decisions list, these are the decisions that have been made on my VM. But if you would rather have a visual dashboard, well, you can. You can run the command CS CLI dashboard setup and ask it to listen on all the IPs. Make sure you do have Docker installed already. We'll answer yes to that. We're happy to create a new group and now it's downloading the Docker image. Now the installation is complete. It has given us the username and password for us to log in and you need to use your IP. So if I head back to uh, Sivo and get the IP, we can visit that IP on port 3000 in the browser and use the credentials that the terminal just gave us. Let's give that a go. And you can see now we've got our login page to our dashboard and let's head over back to our terminal and grab the login details. So this is the username, crowdsec at crowdsec.net. And this is the password. I'm going to copy and paste that back into the password field and let's sign in. And now you'll see this beautiful dashboard. You've got the decision list, you've got history, and you've got the main dashboard. And this populates over time as you collect more information about your server. You can then filter by date, location, scenario, and so much more. I like the easy installation and the dashboard. Plus they have great documentation with daily operations using the CSCLI project and the hub to keep your detection mechanism up to date is really straightforward. CrowdSec can run against your live logs, but also against your cold logs, so you can catch up on historic data. It makes it a lot easier to detect potential false positives, perform forensic analysis, or generate reporting. And the dashboard gives you great visibility and insights on what is going on and the decisions CrowdSec is making. We all know ops teams love Prometheus and Grafana, so it is great that CrowdSec exposes a Prometheus endpoint, so those metrics can be scraped by Prometheus and then visualized with Grafana to help the ops team analyze the data even further. Of course, admins have a friendly command line interface tool if they prefer. Who doesn't like a great dashboard and some geeking out on the command line tools? One architectural design which I think is super important is that everything in CrowdSec is API centric. All the components are communicating via HTTP. This means that multi-machine setups can easily integrate with one another and other tools. This is such an advantage as you are not vendor locked in and can expand your ecosystem by adding other tools. Talking about multiple machines, CrowdSec has a platform with a generous tier where you can see all your alerts across your instances. 
Sign up on their platform with your email and password. Let me do that now. So you can log in straight away from the website and you can sign up. But I've done that already, so I'm gonna hit the login button and I'm gonna log in. Here you can see my previous instance that I've done already, but we're gonna add the new one that we created today. So I'm gonna press add instance. Then it gives you instructions on what you need to do in three simple steps. As I've already got one instance in role, it's actually only showing me the third step. And that's all you need to do as well. And you can copy this and run it on your instance. And now I run that command without pressing anything. It asks us if we want to accept the enrollment. So let's hit accept. Make sure it is your IP, double check that it is your server enrolling. Now you can see we've got another instance appear. As we get more instances, we can filter and sort and actually change the layout. From the instances, we can go to the instance itself and see the different settings and agents and bouncers, but we can go straight to the alerts page as well, which is super interesting, where we'll list our alerts by instance and we can filter further by date with helpful visualized graphs. There are so many options, so I highly recommend you signing up and having a play. So how can you get involved? A good place to start is the GitHub repo. Let's look at it again. You can start by starring the repo so you can support the project, find it more easily in the future, and get the project activity in your GitHub feed. Next, I recommend installing CrowdSec so you can have a play around with it. Because this is an open source project, after starring the project, you can get involved in the discussion, feedback, ask questions, and suggest improvements to the docs. But before you start contributing to any open source project, I recommend reading their contributing guide. CrowdSec's contributing guide talks about good first issues, which are a great way to get started and how and where to connect with the community. Also, you will notice that recently, open source projects are supporting content that is created on their projects. So it's not just about code. Writing a blog or tutorial is supporting the open source project. Want to get involved on a more technical level? Then great! Can you verify a bug someone has raised? Want to go deeper? There are bugs waiting to be fixed, features and more. Not ready to create your own pull request yet? Well, you can get involved with reviewing open pull requests. Did someone fix a bug? Can you test it and give feedback? The ways you can get involved are endless. Just remember to have fun and add value. This is the best way to learn faster, grow your network and accelerate your career. Share your thoughts on the open source project CrowdSec in the comments below. And while you're down there, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already.